in this video, we're going to talk about diffraction gratings. What happens if you pass light through some, some grating with a lot of slits, like thousands of them in a very, very small area, and then what happens as they disperse through light? Now, you might have seen my previous video on the Young double split experiment. If you haven't, I suggest you do, because it's very useful to try and compare the differences between the diffraction gratings and the Young double split experiment. So let's take a look at what happens. Well, essentially what happens is you just pass some sort of light. Let's say this is a laser of obviously red light. Then you pass it through a diffraction grating. Now a diffraction grating is just a piece of like a thin card that has a lot of slits on it that are really, really small and infinitesimally spaced apart. There are thousands of them within one centimeter. So there's a lot of that, and the reason for that is obviously because light has a very, very high frequency, especially in the visible spectrum. If you have a high frequency and a low wavelength, the diffraction effects are likely to be very small, even if the gratings or the slits are very small. So what you are effectively aiming for is you're trying to make the width of the slit within this grating, obviously. If you enlarge this, it would look something like that. You're trying to make this as close to the wavelength of light as possible, which is very, very small. So, yeah, we can't possibly make a slit that small. So whatever slits we do make, they're not going to cause that much diffraction because light's wavelengths are extremely small. But in any case, what happens here is that you will see a bunch of different uh, points where light is concentrated and where light is bright. And then at certain points, it's going to be dark and it's going to be bright again and dark again. And these we call maxima. So this is the maxima that forms. You can see that this is the, li the, the light that goes in. And this is the light that comes out directly along the same direction. Now, this has not gone through any diffraction. And so this we call the zeroth maxima. It's basically where none of the diffraction happened and this is the brightest one. And then you have the first maxima. The first maxima are both onto the right and the left sides of the zeroth maxima. And then you have the second one. And then you have the third one. And, you know, assume that you have more here. So what, what we realize about this is that it's also symmetric. So you see something that spans out from the zeroth maxima, which is placed along the traveling line of the incident light. And you see a bunch of patterns that are symmetric. And what's happening is you have the diffraction grating and then you pass the light into it. And because there's so many different gratings, right, from each slit, the light is diffracted, it's dispersed out. So what happens is if you really enlarge this, you're going to see that from each slit, there is dispersing light. And there's the slit right next to it. It's also dispersing light. There is the split right, slit right next to it. It's also dispersing light. And, it, you know, there are thousands of them. And so they keep dispersing light. And then along that screen, the little maxima and minima that you see where it's like bright and dark is because these dispersing spread out lights they interfere with each other sometimes they constructively interfere and then sometimes they destructively interfere so that's what makes the pattern right here the interesting thing about using a diffraction grating is that the angles at which these maxima occur are very, very much greater. So you might have remembered the interference fringes that you saw on the um, Young double split experiment. So this is what that looked like, right? This is a very enlarged diagram. In reality, this you can see that the diffractions between these interference fringes, they're very, very small. But the thing is for... Um, diffraction gratings, this becomes much bigger. This this distance between these two things, they become much bigger. And in addition, you can see that the interference fringes for the Young double split experiment, they're equally spaced. You don't see them becoming further and further apart as they go. But for the diffraction gratings, the angles increase. The higher the, the order of the maxima, which means like third maxima, is a higher order than second maxima, second order maxima. So they increase with the order of the maxima. That's the, hold on, that's the zeroth maxima, let's say, for the diffraction grading. First order maxima. Second order maxima. It's further apart. You can see that it's distinctly further apart. Third order maxima, fourth order maxima, etc. 
the angles are increasing. Essentially, what's happening is they're all coming from this point in the diffraction grating, right? And what's happening is that their angles are increasing. Their angles are increasing. So that's kind of the difference. The angles are much greater, the fringes are not equally spaced. Just like the Young double split experiment, this diffraction grating thing also helps to prove that, first of all, light is a wave. And, and it shows this in showing us that light has diffraction effects. And second of all, light also has interference effects. So light has diffraction effects because it spreads out over a long screen. And if it didn't diffract, then this would never have happened. And then it shows interference because it shows that certain areas become very bright and certain areas become very dark. These bright areas we call maxima or, you know, singular is maximum. So let's take a look at how this interference really happens. On the zeroth order maximum, remember this is the one that's directly along the traveling line of the incident wave, um, all of the light has traveled exactly the same amount. So imagine that this is each slit in the grating, and then there's light coming out from each slit. They've all traveled exactly the same amount, one, two, three, four, and so they're all going in the same direction. You can see that right now, they're all kind of going to their peak like this, which means their, their resultant wave is going to be very big. It's going to be like an addition of all of them. So this is what makes the light so bright at um, the zeroth order maximum. Now let's look at the first order maximum. At the first order maximum, they have a difference, path difference of lambda at each grading. So what happens is, right, over here at the zeroth maximum, all of them are meeting together and then they are superposing together to make a very, very big wave. What happens at this dark spot? Well, at this dark spot, what happens is that they each of the waves from each grading or each like slit travels a little bit more than each other. And this amount is one out of two lambda. And because they traveled one out of two lambda um, apart from each other, imagine this. This guy traveled one lambda. This guy traveled one out of two lambda. So he starts from here, he goes down one lambda, and then 1.5. So, so this guy's traveled this much more than this guy. And you can see that while this guy is at an above peak, this guy has a below peak, and therefore they cancel each other out to create no um, amplitude, zero amplitude, and that's what makes them dark. So this place where it becomes very dark, it's because each of them cancel each other out because they all have a difference of one out of two lambdas. And then when it becomes bright again at the first maximum, they have a diffraction, uh, they have a path difference of one lambda again. So as it becomes bright again, this guy travels one, two, three, four, five, six, and this guy will travel seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And because this guy traveled exactly one more lambda than this one, they actually both end up going in the same direction, like their amplitude. So that will end up giving us a very big um, amplitude again because of superposition. So yeah, at the first order maximum, every single wave from every single grading has a path difference of lambda. And then obviously this trend follows. At the second order maximum, they have a path difference, all of them have a path difference of two lambdas. And at the third order, it's three lambdas, etc. What about at the second time that the, the, the pattern is dark? For instance, this is the first time that the pattern is dark. What about over here? Well, we know that over here, all of the waves have a path difference of two, one and a two lambdas. Over here, it's going to be one and a half lambdas. As long as it ends on a half, 0.5, they're still going to have a difference of a phase difference of 180 degrees in which they cancel each other out. So the equation that can be used for diffraction gratings is this. And it's d sine theta is n lambda. This is very important. Um, d is basically the 
distance between the transmission gratings. So basically, it's, it's the distance between this and this. Sine theta. So theta is basically the angle of the certain maxima from the zeroth angle. So let's say this is the zeroth maximum, n equals zero. This is the first order maximum, n equals one. What is this angle? That is theta. n is obviously which order it is. You could be the first order, second order maximum, third order maximum, and then you have lambda. So as long as you know the angle and the distance between the transmission gratings, and also which order maximum it is, you can actually get what wavelength the light is, and hence what color the light is. So yeah, d sine theta is n lambda. Lastly, I want to take a look at the dispersion of white light with a transmission grating. This is a photo of the diffraction of dispersion of white light. You can see that this is the transmission grating, right? So what you see here is that once they come out of the transmission grating, this is the zeroth order maximum. Um, and then this is going to be theta, obviously. This is the first order maximum. This is the second order maximum. So it's literally just what we have seen. And what happens with white light is that it's not only one frequency, it's a bunch of frequencies all added up together to make this bright white light. And so each wavelength gets diffracted by different amount. Why is that? Because so the, if you have different wavelengths, then theta is going to be different because n is going to be the same, d is going to be the same. So let's say for purple light, purple light has the highest frequency and hence the lowest wavelength. This is going to become very small. For the same order maximum, your theta is also going to decrease because these two stay the same. So which means that purple light is going to have the smallest angle of dispersion. Which is the reason why you see that purple is the closest to the first order, because this theta is smaller. When lambda becomes bigger, for instance, for red light, you have a long wavelength, um, you're also going to have a higher theta. And that's just with according to the equation. That means this angle becomes bigger. And so that's why if you have this experiment set up, you're going to see that the purple light is going to be closer to the zeroth order maximum, and the red light is going to be further away from it. And then you can see in the second order maximum, the difference becomes much more distinct. Wait, let me highlight that. The purple light is like that, green light is like that, the red light is like that. The difference becomes much bigger, and it's much more obvious as to what's happening. The reason for this happening is because of our equations that we have found out. So that's about it for transmission gratings or diffraction gratings. And it's another useful experiment to show that light is a wave. Thank you for watching.